Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Rundown, episode number 25. I'm your host at Woke Back to High Media TV. I'm your host, Evan, from High Media TV. My pit of my uh, partner in crime here, no.2 Brian, Orte Brian no.2 Ortega. And we are back with The Rundown. We've been gone for, at time of publishing, which is on Monday, which it should be coming out, Monday the uh, 23rd. It has been a solid fucking two weeks, three weeks even, since we last uh, graced your lovely ears, and we have a lot to get into, primarily with some news that happened today. Did he do it? Did he done done it? Did he's been got? Did he has been the arrested? The Diddy party is officially over. The Diddy party is officially over. <laughs> A yep. thousand, a thousand bottles of baby oil. Oh my god! <laughs> I love an ass as much as the next man. I love shape, asses twerking. I love asses being naked. I love a G string in an ass. But I, I love oiled up asses. I cannot imagine that there is enough like ass at any party to warrant even a quarter of that usage. Even 250 bottles is too much. Like it's you could have, you could have, you know, you know, stacked models, like from head to toe with it, with nothing except tassels on, oiled the fuck up, and you still wouldn't make a dent in that many fucking bottles. I don't even think you make that much of a dent in one bottle. I saw motherfuckers discussing that they have the same baby oil for decades, decades. Mind you, you, baby oil does expire. It does. <laughs> it does. But you only use a little bit at a time. Like you like you don't need like you, you, you don't need that much to like, you know, have a little fun, you know? I just thought for asshole, yes, it's fine. But I thought for pussy this shit ain't, ain't good. That's a no go. No, you no, you know, you use baby you don't use baby oil for lube. You buy you buy water based lubricant. It, unless you hate you the person you're with, and then you do whatever the fuck you want, because because oh, if you're not hold on very quickly, hold if on, you're not you quick. you use baby oil for like massages and rubbing and you know that stuff. Wait, where's he going? What's he doing? What's he got to do? What's Sorry, up? Sorry, my little my little cat was screaming in the hallway, acting like people were here, but I'm the only one, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah he just literally walks into the hallway knows everybody is gone and just goes meh, meh. and i'm like please but yeah back to denny it's over <laughs> meek mill is celebrating <laughs> like he 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 you see what 50 cent tweeted what he tweet what i tell you he said it's i ain't got no thousand bottles of baby oil <laughs> Uh, yeah, Listen, man. man. Uh, I mean, Fifty Cent is sitting pretty. Yeah, Williams is sitting pretty. He's the reason for all this shit. Yeah, that's true. Anywho, moving on. Uh, Space Marine Two. How you? How's it? How's it treating you? So I won't lie to the people here. I have been really going hard on Yakuza Like a Dragon. Can't tell mm. you why, but. That's been my current obsession. Uh, but Space Marine 2, let me just say, it feels fucking great. In terms of a modern day hack and slash Warhammer experience, I mean, this is a definitive experience if I've ever had one. In terms of first person, like uh, Warhammer has always been, uh, what, top down, right? For the most part, because it's... All, all of the acclaimed RTS games, ideas. yes. Yeah, all the acclaimed like, games. Main, main installments of the franchise this this alongside the original space uh space marine 2 space marine sorry uh is like one of the only experiences outside of i would make the argument dark tide and that's about it of like hd fps first person feels first -person like good warhammer world building because the other thing is and i see a lot of people making this comment and i kind of agree uh, if you really like Star Wars, you probably should start getting into Warhammer because a lot of that uh, 
original OG Star Wars feel is very much still alive in the Warhammer franchise. And right, please, if you want Every, to say something, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the gritty like stakes that you felt with the original trilogy is in Warhammer, and with the difference being at, like. Not only that, like, you love Dark Vader because he's evil and awesome and cool. Everything is evil and awesome and cool in Warhammer. Everybody blows, even, like, the Space Marine you're playing as. So, it's, it is a grand time. Like, you playing the... I mean, but... don't get me wrong. Uh, let me just say, yeah. Space Marine 2 will not sit there and baby you at all. They fully expect you to know what the universe is, what the franchise has been up to that point. It is full of lore and, uh, you know, uh, they have cherubs, something that I didn't even know was a thing until I... Oh yeah, lobotomized infants that they put that they have fly around to refill you and shit. And I was like, why the fuck is there so many cupids flying around? <laughs> yeah, no, those, those aren't That's cupids. Those are, those, those are lobotomized toddlers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, gotta, yeah. Gotta, yeah. Gotta, you're you're the bad guy. You're the also the bad guy. You know. So it's like the thing is, is yeah. So it's like now here's the thing though. From what I hear, like it is on its merits as a game, feels fucking solid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think you could make. Don't get me wrong. I played it really when the early access was happening. There were some bugs. Some glitches. is Space Marine on Game Pass? I don't believe so. You could check me on that though. I'm pretty sure it isn't. Fair enough. I'd love to play it though, but, but it's like it's like $60 I cannot swing right now. I'd yeah, play no, it with I you it. too. I'd play investment. it with you too. But it is a full investment. And if I have you here, we'll figure out something with the computer or the PlayStation so we could actually play operations mode together. Because yeah. I have touched it. Uh same thing with multiplayer. So Opera really operations is the PvE missions, right? Yep, the PvE co-op. Co yep. Mm. And I mean, from also the campaign is fully uh, co-op, fully. Really? Yeah. Huh. Some uh, I will say, some of the moments in the game feel like you need another player because with the bots, it's just not that great. Kind of reminiscent of some early, you know, 2010, 2000 games where, like, the AI is still very good, but they just don't cover the shit it's, that needs yeah, to be Yeah, it's just not there yet. Yeah, no, nah, I hear you on that. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. I, I don't know the in-universe lore, but uh, there's, like, rats on the floor, uh, Tyranid rats, and they swarm. And you're supposed to have a flamer, a flamethrower, to keep them away. Then you have these huge bubble-esque goddamn Tyranid creatures that are constantly shooting you with psychic bolts that right. the flamethrower doesn't reach. So it's like a balancing act. Like you have to, I would have made the argument you have to play with other people, but you're going to feel like, oh my God, if I did this section in co-op, it'd be so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Someone, will, someone will give you, so you, like, oh shit, I got backup, thank God, type of shit. But outside of that small, minor criticism, genuinely, the game is fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, the world building, the universe. My biggest thing with Warhammer, since it was always an RTS top-down franchise for the most part, until very recently, I always like stowed away from it because it was like, RTS is really, or isn't my thing. But now that I'm able to get boots on the ground gameplay, oh, I'm fucking loving it. And the mass amount of enemy mobs that are on screen they actually feel challenging you need to be smart about your move set it's like that uh days go it's like days gone like that that game that had like that th those gigantic hordes of zombies and stuff but they weren't you know they days, weren't like days gone is the was the scam oh yeah days not daisy um the fuck i don't think it was daisy either what the fuck was it? I know, I know it was like a, it was like the only cool thing about it was the zombies and the story was like mad uninspired. I don't know offhand, but I mean, if you take like, I want to say it's like a modern day. Uh, I don't even want to say Left 4 Dead because there is objective in the missions itself, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. It's hard to nail down, but yeah, great game. Eight, nine out of ten. 
uh, definitely up there for me for game of the year. I also brought Black Myth Wukong. Have not played a single second of it yet. So next week I will give you guys more of my uh, take on that. For sure. Hell, Real I might, I might actually be. I'm, I unironically might actually be out there. Like if I if we get to like the week before we have to be out, and I don't have employment here in Delaware of any kind i'm probably going out there and no, i I'm and just... and that's fine like and like i'll i will you know bum around at like some on some friends houses and shit in the meantime and uh you know you know and just kind of work, coordinate with my parents and shit to sort shit out so yeah that's that's fine um what else uh happened in the last like obviously the debate which I, was I gonna say. which I watched at in the nut house on like that Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been very very gratifying. <laughs> I will say like it made me feel so much better about the future. <laughs> and like I got to say cuz I was I was having a conversation with my manager. I could definitely tell he leans more Trump, but I don't know if he votes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's like he's he, he's a dumbass, but not a dumbass that tilts the scales. So I was talking with him, and I will agree they definitely pushed back way more on Trump with Carmela, but obviously they had to. Who the fuck are we kidding here? <laughs> Every single time Carmela would speak, it was sunshine and rainbows. Every time Trump would speak, it was doom and gloom, and we're all gonna die tomorrow. I mean, holy shit. Like honey Stay is in the dogs. <laughs> don't, don't don't get me wrong. Like fear is a great motivator, but you know what? You know what routinely beats out fear when when put side by side. Hope and Kamala's offering hope, and hope got Obama elected. Like the only thing that I'll that I'll just comment on is genuine fear is a good motivator. When you're just screaming about an ant walking up your arm, everybody else just looks at you and laughs. That's right. that's the difference. Yeah, it can't be bullshit. Now, yeah. I will say, mm -hmm. me, my perspective, me here right now, since mm -hmm. Carmelis barely got any pushback in that debate because she didn't, she wasn't the issue on the stage, Trump should have done a better job of pushing back harder on her. That is the only way that these debates are going to move the needle in your direction, Trumpy boy. But mm -hmm. let's be so honest. My biggest critique on this debate was Carmela barely, you know, barely really got pushed any pushback and she didn't have to defend herself. That's been my argument with her since she entered the election as the de facto uh, Democrat well, nominee. The thing is, is, is that like the de like the debate moderators aren't there to you know like she didn't like the thing is is that you can have policy differences and things of that nature debate moderators are there to fact check she didn't lie you know she no, she no didn't, i'm not saying she lied yeah. i'm saying let me say this well here's I'm the thing the, 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 i want to be very clear right that now. the pushback that she's supposed to get from the moderators is when they allow Trump to respond. The problem is Trump. Yeah, that's what I'm. Was a that's fuck why up. I said Trump should have pushed back against her more. What I'm saying is, yeah, Carmela yeah. is very, yeah, Carmela is very intelligent. She knows mm -hmm. what she's doing. She, she knew that she out, needed to push his fucking proud. buttons. Well, I'm saying outside of the debate for a second. Right. Then we'll go back to it. Right. 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 Her go, campaign. Go, go. She's running very very smartly because she's keeping everything under cloak and dagger she's not doing hard interviews where she's really getting hard pushback she's not getting questioned on why she flip-flopped on so many of these stances yep. i genuinely don't give a fuck that's what politicians do yeah uh what's it called and yeah water is what when yeah. you are when you are on the stage and you are seen as being the calm, cool, collected person who seem seemingly gets every answer correct or at least doesn't instill fear in every single person listening to the goddamn answer, uh, yeah, you're not... This is how 
campaign should be done from here on in. It should be, we pick the nominees three months before the election, we barely know anything about them, and we find it out during the ele- uh, during their presidency. Because, obviously, the only time people care is when it's four years later. Mm-hmm. Speaking of four years later, let's talk about Jill Stein. What happened with her now? So, she is having a difficult time due to the fact that she is ostensibly just somebody who shows up every four years as a spoiler for the Democrats. Which is, you know, kind of like, like, and has been shown to take, and has shown to take money from Russian oligarchs. Like, she's getting a lot of pushback in where she di- didn't get pushback before. Which is funny. My thing is, is that I think the reason she's getting a lot of pushback now when she didn't in the past is because she is about as irrelevant as she was uh, back then. Except the difference is, is that... In key states, like I think it was uh, in Wisconsin, uh, Hillary lost in Wisconsin by about 20,000 votes. Jill Stein got 50,000 in that state. Now, here's the thing. Like, what the thing is, is that third parties can matter if they have the power like if, if they like are a if they if they are like can be bargained with the problem is is that people like the green party which she's running under and here's why she i think she's just this is why i say she's just a spoiler doesn't um doesn't run any down ballot candidates like and give them that like national like they do run down ballot candidates but they don't give them like institutional support like it's they, they they show out once every four years and that's it but yeah um so what's going on in there you know, she's just she's just making the rounds again like dogging on democrats not ever talking about the fascist rhetoric you know coming out the republicans mouth she's just she's just goofy but moving on let's we can move away for into some like more tech stuff anywho um but I was going to say, let's yeah. discuss the PS5 Pro. Yes. So I know you did a video on it. It's marginally better. 45% overall, uh, faster processing, AI upscale, whatever yeah. it is. Ultimately, most pe- most PlayStation users keep their PlayStation in performance mode. The frames are the most important thing. And uh, they were pretty much making it. Uh, the PS5 Pro, I'll be honest is really for if you do a lot of backwards compatible gaming for ps4 games uh you know uh ps5 games that have already been out uh don't really look too much better to the naked eye i don't really think most people most gamers can even tell the difference uh you gotta really really be tech oriented the aspect of this that pisses me off is how much nickel and diming sony fucking does to its consumers Mm -hmm. the base the base there's no there's no different tiers of the ps5 bro the base ps5 pro comes without a disk drive at 700 dollars. if you want it to stand vertically with a disk drive it is 30 dollars extra for the dip for the stand and 80 dollars for the disk drive are you are you so fucking for real it was yes 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 so if you want a fully fledged customized you know correct uh ps5 pro you are spending 810 dollars just to get everything for it that's not even coming with a second controller you might as well just get a pre-built pc at that point that's what i'm saying like you That's could, exactly. you could Even if quite thousand dollars. Even you... if it's a thousand dollars, the lifespan of a thousand dollar pre built computer lasts way longer than a PlayStation. I got a, I got, I got a, I got a, a two thousand uh, dollar pre built computer I bought in twenty, uh, uh, in twenty twenty. We're four years in. This bitch still chugging along, peachy fucking keen. 
Like I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got, a, I got a 280 in this bitch, and you know the only thing I would probably get for it is extra RAM, which is probably what, it, which is what it needs. You know, so like I, 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 mean, I, yeah, continue. But between this, the continuous uh, 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 prices of old video games on the PlayStation Store, they they are running a monopoly, and the FTC really needs to look into that. Well, here it's despicable. Well, well, I would argue, like, I was, well, well, how would you break that up? Because their business is a platform. Like, the, 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 like they sell the hardware that you play these games on, and, you know, Up you... There, strictly with the PlayStation Store itself, they should be forced to allow third-party per, third uh, public, uh, you know, a third-party storefront yeah. on their fucking software there, there, there's the there, there's thing. precedent for it there's precedent for it for sure and this is why xbox say what you want about xbox but in the ui for consumers there is so many different things that you can do they constantly have deals and don't get me wrong playstation does too but they don't keep the shit at fucking premium cost like if i go to buy uh call of duty modern warfare 2 the original one the original one with multiplayer it's still like 50 60 dollars that's a 2009 game i could find that shit in a bargain bin at fucking walmart <laughs> Like what yeah. are we talking about here? So so here's the here's the thing that I want to kind of note as to why Xbox is focusing on value as much. They A are a much larger enterprise than Sony, Microsoft is. And no, and no, no, no. Only until Activision Blizzard's, uh, what's it called, uh, merged Act with them did they start paying attention to this shit. Previously, they didn't care because Microsoft itself never focused on Xbox because they didn't care because it wasn't that much of a uh, money taker. Once they started buying up all these studios, that's when Microsoft was like, okay, Xbox has not really been profitable. We have to make it profitable now. Which is, but here's the thing, right? Like, here's the thing I want to know. Um, Xbox's install base, like in here, in here, and this is kind of like the thing with Xbox versus PlayStation. I think I will tell anybody if you want a cheap, good gaming experience where you don't have to pay a lot of money for games and you only like buy the ones that you really, really like, is get an Xbox S, get an Xbox Series X. It costs the same amount of money as a Nintendo Switch, the base version of the Nintendo Switch. And get you and, and drop the twenty bucks on a Game Pass Ultimate uh, subscription. You will be able to play basically most games, plenty of games you wouldn't have otherwise played because that you you would want to spend money on them, and you would have a good time. It is the best option for consumers right now. The trend that they are taking with gaming is concerning, and and disruptive in a, in a in a potentially negative way. But for now selfishly as a consumer you'd be a fool not to take that route if you want to just have some a gaming box at your tv and, and play games now the reason here's the problem right i'm just googling something real quick yeah yeah so there are 34 million Game Pass subscri subscribers. At, at, let's just, like, at the lowest end. Like, at the, at, like, the $13 option. The cheaper option. Like, let's say for, like, just hypothetically, like, the $13 option. That means that, uh, they are bringing in approximately... 442, you can round up 450 million dollars a month just yeah, off of Game Pass. Here, I'll, 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 I'm almost done. I'm almost done. There, there's a second piece of information that's no, no, critical. No, wait. Just, I just have to ask this and then we're good. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Do you think Xbox now realizes that on Xbox systems, they have reached their ceiling on Game Pass? That's why they increase the price. 
they have, and you and that was the second point I was going to make because Xbox's install base is twenty one million units. They have a install active user base of twenty one million units, which is a third of what Sony's is. Yeah. I mean, so, so but 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 unlike Sony, you know, I as a PC user almost exclusively still benefit from a Game Pass Ultimate subscription. No, 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 no. I'll tell you right now. If you're strictly talking about PC, well, that's where get... the, that's that's where the that's where the differential in the thirty-four million comes from. Well, let me let me say, if you're in terms of gaming, the best choice for you to get all the exclusives that inevitably come to this system, PC. It might be the biggest, uh, uh, you know, biggest direct uh, initial investment of a thousand to two thousand dollars, depending on what type of system you want to get. But think about it: you get all the Game Pass games that are on PC for ten dollars a month. Everybody on Xbox has to either pay eight dollars for Xbox Gold that fucked up tier that they just introduced um or you're paying now 13 to 15 dollars to gain access on xbox and pc pc is the best best choice all around Speaking absolutely of stick bros stick bros a- animations comment i feel like people get pushed to playstation because sony makes most of their exclusives yes most sony exclusives are better than xbox exclusives agree prior to Prior to all the studios being brought up, right? Right. So, but so you, you yeah, have, you have to remember on, like wait, what wait, they wait. bought. You have to, you have to realize though that Xbox was not really the place for exclusives. That's always been PlayStation. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. The three, the Xbox original era to the 360 era had great Xbox exclusives, but 360 to Xbox One, that's when they fucked up. And I still, I still people- cry about Scalebound. <laughs> that's why so many people have such a huge library of digital games from playstation 4 the playstation 3 was such a fucking was such a fucking uh, uh fumble up a bag uh the price was bad the way that they introduced it the actual uh you know developing games for it was a fucking nightmare playstation 3 null and void bad example but I just hope PlayStation is not going back to making those that era of bad decisions because we're looking at something equivalent to that, especially with this fucking console. I get it's a pro version, but I'm just like, fuck. Like, <laughs> like the purpose of a console has always been a cheaper, compact alternative to play games so you didn't have to get a PC. PC gaming has gotten more accessible, more cheap as time has gone on. Like, 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 to the point where even Linux gaming is now viable, like, like, than it's been in decades. And the ultimate thing is, is that, like, at that price point, you are competing, you are genuinely, genuinely competing with uh, PCs at that point. And at that point, you are now dealing with Microsoft twice because microsoft has the monopoly bird borderline on you know pc gaming that might be contested possibly with the steam deck uh steam has been making some moves with the steam deck real quick that's what i don't understand on this decision though the steam Mm -hmm. deck itself is even cheaper than this fucking machine the most expensive version of the steam deck is cheaper than this machine that's what I'm saying. All three tiers of storage is fucking cheaper than the PlayStation Pro. It doesn't make any sense. And by the it way, more. And, and <laughs> also, the Steam Deck also functions has a de- also has a desktop. Like you can put it on a dock, plug in a wireless mouse and keyboard, and it functions exact. It functions like a like a desk. It has a desktop version of Linux. That is good. It's not. It's not like if oh. I were to. Yeah. Just asking, what's the price point of the max storage uh, uh, Steam Deck with the keyboard, mouse, and dock? How much would that be total? So the Steam, so the, uh, and also uh, the the 512 gigabyte LCD models, which is better than what I have, by the way, 
Like, that is the newer version that they added. Um, that has the highest uh, gigabyte. Yeah. Is first of all on discount twenty five percent off right now at three thirty six. Oh wow, that's the most expensive. Yep. Which in that one costs. Uh, oh wait, no. So they actually they released new ones. So they released a terabyte OLED version. Okay, and how much is that? I kind of want that really bad, actually. Um, six hundred and uh, six fifty. Six fifty. All right, how much is the keyboard, mouse, and dock? Um, if the keyboard and mouse isn't sold by Valve itself, don't include it. Uh, the docking, the official docking station, is eighty bucks. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten I the dock I use I got off of Amazon for like thirty. I'm still See? gonna say like official official price yeah. so far seven hundred and thirty dollars yeah. for you to have a portable PC, pretty yep. much. Now, granted, you still have to you you still have to get a mouse, your own mouse and keyboard. But the other thing you need to know about I mean, what thirty dollars for both, like genuinely. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that and here's the thing about the Steam Deck, right? It is fully like the 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 um schematics for it, like its build and stuff, are publicly available. So p you can buy ex you can buy accessories for this and and stuff specifically for this third party. Hella cheap. So and like, that's what I'm saying. Like I've seen people like completely. I've, I've, compl I've seen people take out the entire body, replace it with like pink monstrosities and stuff, and like have this like girly pop Steam Deck, and it's it's it works. It's great. Well, this is what I'm saying. My PlayStation mm -hmm. Four controller. Right. Uh, what I got my PlayStation in 2013 when the original Battlefront came out. So 11 years. 11 years I've been using my controller. Mm -hmm. Not once did I get stick drift. I buy this fucking PS5 controller. 75 fucking dollars they want from me. $75 for a controller, Evan. For a controller. Less it than Joy-Cons. Less than Joy-Cons. Oh my fucking god. The planned... Uh, More uh, than Joy-Cons, I mean to say. Planned That's obsolescence. Planned obsolescence yeah, is the, the word. Planned obsolescence for. is insane, man. Because then PlayStation has the audacity, has the audacity to introduce a two hundred and fifty dollar fucking controller. Which, if that gets stick drift, hey, guess what? You could buy a thirty dollar uh, uh, analog module. Only one though, only one, and that's what I'm talking about. The nickel and fucking diamond is crazy. Hey, it's you know, crazy. you know what Nintendo will do. If you send your Joy-Cons to Nintendo, they'll fix them for free and send them back to you. I'm fairly certain Sony will do it as long as it's in warranty. My thing is, I brought the shit off of Nintendo Amazon. Nintendo will do it, warranty be damned. Yeah, but I have my gripes with Nintendo. But hardware... We all do, we all regarding do. Regarding hardware, they have, they have that shit down. Without a doubt, they make quality shit, especially for children. We're talking about something that's expected to be thrown on the floor continuously, and that shit still works. Yep, props like props to props to uh, Nintendo. Like, listen, we have I have a lot of gripes about Nintendo. The quality of their hardware is not one of them. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I will also just say, just a small little tangent that I'll go on. Uh, not sure if you've ever watched Dexter, but goddamn, if you are a current Dexter fan, you are eating fucking good. We got Resurrection coming out next summer. We got Original Sin coming out in December. I'm so excited. Have you ever watched Dexter? Uh, Maddie uh, was into it for a while. I saw most of the first season, a little bit of some others. Definitely check it out when you get the time, because it's a great series. Some of the seasons towards the end get fucky, but it ends good, so. Hmm. John Lithgow plays this fucking villain. Ah, amazing. Amazing. Nah, all good. Let me also, since you're doing whatever you're doing, let me also go on this tangent. Watch nope, the fuck out do. of Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers, military show, uh, came out during the early 2000s, I think 2001, all about World War II. Executively, executive produced by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, and every fucking person ever is in it. Uh, again, came out in 2001. Jimmy Fallon's in it. 
Tom Hardy's in it. Uh, 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 I can't remember the actors off the top of my head. Uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Marty from Madagascar. He's in it. Uh, David Schwimmer. Mm. Ah. You go. Everybody's in that fucking show, yo. You, you, if you like war, if you like war, if you like drama, if you like men's stuff, that's the thing. <laughs> Hey, even if you're a woman who likes men's stuff, please go enjoy it. Go on. It is Today is the day and age of everybody being able to enjoy everything. So please watch the fuck out of it because it's just a good story. It's all about, you know, when you're actually in war, the people who have your back versus the people you have who have yours, the whole nine yards. It, it, amazing. This war of mine is another good one for that. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what else has been going on? Uh, hmm. God, I want Space Marines so damn bad. I just, I can't, I financially just cannot justify it though. I got three. So let's I talk about something real quick. What's up? When you play, uh, I'm not sure. Have you played a lot of JRPG games? I think that's what Yakuza is considered. Uh, JRPG. Like when I think JRPG, I think like Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy. And Chrono Trigger type shit. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, you do walk around with your party all over the map. You attack, you know, based off of... Okay, yeah. If, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. So, like, I wouldn't say no to it being that, if I'm being honest. Well, but. I'm just going to ask. How do you feel about, like, challenges and mini games and shit being tied to rewards in the game? Because I personally, I enjoy it. But it's gotten to a point where, like, I have to definitively choose what i'm gonna focus on because i'm only on like chapter four of the game and i have like everything almost done it's bad it's really bad <laughs> um i think it's i think for me it's definitely one of those things where say again one more time. I'm sorry. I'm just all over the place. No, all good. All good. Uh, just how do you feel about doing like extra stuff in the game that's tied? I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, there's a spider in here. He's just a guy. He's fine. Um, I think you're a better person. Than I am. <laughs> Listen, man. We had the worst ant and gnat problem for like three weeks. Like spiders. I see them. I'm like, good. Kill them all. Um, I agree. But go ahead. For me, it's more of a case of I feel like games that tie mini games and bullshit to progression is annoying. I like it when a game, like if 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 they sh the mini games and the time spent in them should be balanced in such a way that they make the game easier. But not to a point where it's busted. So what I mean by that is a good way uh, to look at it is, you know, akin to side questing. If you get certain levels in certain mini games, certain difficulty challenges, boss fights, um, you know, like for example, you are doing the hostess mini game or what the fuck ever, and you end up like the hostess one where like you you know like it or whatever and then what you do and then what happens is is, is that you end up having to deal with the owner of a um uh like of like of, of a of a like a hostess club somewhere else in the in the area and like and like fight them and stuff and basically um you know i don't think i did a good job of framing this right let me let me give you a better better example because i know what you're saying but like that's more traditional games what i mean more so is like going to an arcade in the game going to like a claw game doing the claw game like it's actually real life but then you get let's say three of the same plush doll and then you go to report in on that job and you get like 10k and a few health items that's what i'm kind of saying that's what I'm prioritizing over the story. Can't tell you why, but that's what I'm choosing to focus on. Oh, then that's not that's not a problem. Like, do whatever sparks yeah. joy. Do whatever sparks no, I'm, joy. No, I'm not saying. 
I'm not saying uh, do you think it's a problem. I'm just asking, like, where do you feel like your uh, goals lie when those things are presented to you in games? Do you feel like I have an obligation to finish them before the main story? That I always feel that way. I it depends. It depends on the game. It depends on how annoying the movie games are, and it depends on like how I'm feeling at the time. If I'm in a particularly completionist mood, I'll do it. Like a good example for this is the Elder Scrolls Online. I will usually not do the main story of a chapter or a DLC until I run around the entire fucking map and do every single other side quest. And then I'll do it. The final, then, then I'll do the final thing. Okay. And 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 there are usually story implicate like rewards and implications for doing that. At the end of every chapter, everybody usually will crowd in a room, give you some kind of fucking reward, like a herald, and you get to talk to all the characters you've talked to. And it's generally like, you know, like here, enjoy this circle jerk for, you know, being, you know, a fucking tryhard. Which, which, which is nice, but, you know, at a certain point, you kind of, like, like I, I, I will say, like, you do kind of got to pick up at what point does it kind of get kind of pointless. You know, like, for example, you have, like, at the end of the Dark Brotherhood quest line, quest line in Skyrim, spoilers, game came out, like, fuck, oh, like, oh, 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 like, almost 20, like, oh, over, over 50, almost 15 years ago. I don't want to fucking hear it. Um you get the Dark Brotherhood Forever questline, which is a Radiant quest that will just go kill somebody. It'll pick a random fucking NPC, doesn't matter who, and it could be an NPC that's, like, important or useful, and if you kind of, like, autopilot do it too much, you'll kill most of the fucking NPC named NPCs in the game. Uh, the, another one is the Thieves Guild. You have the different jobs and stuff there, which I prefer to do those because you go somewhere, you teleport somewhere, you sneak in, steal something, sneak out, leave. And because I'm like a level 90 something character, you motherfucker, I know what I'm streaming tomorrow before I go to fucking, uh, uh, to, to like, uh, out, in, outpatient. I'm, st I'm streaming fucking Skyrim tomorrow, you motherfucker. Um, that's because that's now what I feel like I want to do. But, uh, yeah, it's like, it's just like you kind of like get into a loop of like, you need to kind of recognize, is there a definitive end to this task that I'm doing over and over again? Or is it this, is this just like a constant, like, is this like a radiant quest that you're doing repeatedly? If there's a definitive end for it, if, that, if that's what feels good, go for it. But if it's one of those things that was, that's just repeatable, constantly, like, taking your time and shit, I would try to break that and try other things. Like, because if it's just something you do infinite ad nauseum forever, um, if you just want to boot up Yakuza like a dragon and play claw games, be my fucking guest. No, it's not my business to tell you how to live your life. Yeah, I'm just like... What do you think? At the end of the day, I think at a certain point, you got to pick and choose what you want to do because the, the limited time dilemma is still there. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, I think, oh, oh, by the way, in case you're interested, Inscription is currently eight bucks and they added an endless roguelike mode. Nice. Uh, actually, I will talk to you about something. Have you heard of Balterra? Baltero? Balatro? Yeah. Have you played it? I literally just bought it on Steam while we were recording. <laughs> so I'll say, uh, first, uh, I'll say like the first round, very first time you open it, it'll give you the smallest to tutorial ever. It's literally like make hands. So I couldn't figure out what the fuck to do at first. You got to really discard hands to get a flush or uh two two of a kinds at any given time to really beat the first level but once you get it you get it and holy shit i could see how this is a fucking addicting game oh uh, the guy the guy I, who the guy who made it worked in <laughs> worked in casino gaming he, he, he knew he knew how he knew and he knew everything can i tell you something even better and what? you're gonna you're, you're gonna love this in seven days it's coming to mobile 
No, I can't be at work playing this game. I can't. <laughs> it's coming on the 26th. Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, I've been trying so not to get... se Wait, so not seven days. Nine. Nine. Nine days. Okay, okay. I mean, that's very close. Very close to Spark Game. Spark Game Zero. And, oh, I... you, by the way, you lucky bastard, um, it's... Uh, uh, it's coming out on... Uh, oh, no, it's coming out on everything. It's also going to be on Apple Arcade. Oh, okay, cool. That means you're probably going to have to buy it. But well, it well, 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 no. It's also going to be on the Google Play Store. So I'm good as, a, as an Android user. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, that game... You'll see the second you open it up. Uh, just, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. It, re it remains to be seen whether or not it's going to have cross save with the PC version. We'll see. Possibly because of the epic lawsuit with Apple and and you know Google also like being not very happy with it. it the cross save might be more viable. Possibly. We'll see what ends up happening. Also, I have a shameless fucking plug for everybody. Oh yeah. Briefly, 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 if I may. Uh. If you guys, uh, there's a new way to give me money. And I will show you. I am once again asking for your financial support. You can now give me however much money you want and get cat pictures in return. Look at this little fucker. Look at these fuckers. You Look at how this. You should have this on uh, OnlyFans. You should make a high media OnlyFans just for cat photo. <laughs> you, 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 you say that like I, I fucking well might. It's a great idea. Do it, dog. I don't give a fuck. Take it. Steal that idea. I'm letting you. Hold on, hold on. Let's take a look at OnlyFans.com/slash Only cats i know all right that that okay. i was gonna say be careful what you search up well no well they well they can't see it we can <laughs> no i know but this is like looking up in porno porno of like uh big booty ba baboons and then expect it not to see bitches <laughs> I feel like I feel like that shit. I feel like you, if you did that shit, that'd be racist as fuck, bro. Yeah, that's that's goofy. That's wild. <laughs> you really just put in only cats. <laughs> hey man, I'll. Uh... Do <laughs> nah, let me. I'll change my fucking ad. I don't give a shit. Hold on. Uh. O F. Let me type in O F cats. Oh man, if that shit's available, I'm doing. Oh my god, it's available! Yes, take it. Grab it. Nah, look. Nah, check it, check it, check it. Look. <laughs> of cats. <laughs> what would be a better name then? You, well, you tell me. No, I think that's fine. I think that's perfect. Or OF Kitty, OF, OF Kitty Picks, OF Cat Picks. I like OF Cats, though. Only kitties. I can't use... Uh, did I spell kitties right? K-I-T-T-I-E-S? Yeah. Username's not available. Not Only... Fuck, man. All right, fine. Yeah, just do OF cats. Whatever, fine. I'll take it. Oh, hey, listen. I'm on. I, I should probably. Unironically, I should probably fucking talk to Meadow before I do some shit like this. I think she'd be okay with this. Nah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think I'd rather do the picture dump, but I think this is very funny. But yeah. You know how many people you would get accidentally to pay for it? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. 
<laughs> Yo, like literally, like literally, I go on fucking Twitter and uh, just get just rip shit off of like you know the hub or whatever, and just say, "Hey, link in bio or some shit." <laughs> and then link is only fans OF cats. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I feel like Meta would be okay with that. <laughs> Maybe. We'd have to see. I don't know. But um, is there anything else that's happened in the last three weeks that we're not talking about? We did this. Oh yeah, Trump got, almost got assassinated again. And like nobody yeah, cares. Yeah. And like nobody gives a shit. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even a real assassination attempt. I don't know. I just, ah, who gives a shit at this point? You know what I mean? Like, it's just whatever. I gotta say, not that a trash, uh, but switching over to po political mindset real quick, nothing mm -hmm. super deep, but just the amount of attention that Palestine and uh, Israel is getting mm -hmm. is really outshining Ukraine and Russia. Like, it, a million that, to one. I <laughs> have, I, well, my thing is, is, is that like Russia has funded funded Hamas in the past and I would not be surprised if Russia they're behind gave, both yeah no I would not be surprised if Russia gave Hamas like the intel that led to October 7th in so which they could get eyes off of um uh Ukraine because you know, Slava Ukraine. Like, like I support Ukraine's fight and, and us giving them money. Like, like I'm no problem with that. Here's what, My, I, yeah, very quickly, but, here's what I'm yeah. going to say. I don't think anybody is consciously making the choice. You know, uh, Israel and Palestine is the more important conflict. But I think that's what ended up happening. Yeah, I think I think I'm I'm hopeful that like we continue to support Ukraine and give them the aid that they need, but you know, I just you know, I think ultimately like the people working at Boeing and Raytheon factories are are not dissatisfied with the amount of stuff they're making for Ukraine, if any at all. If I'm being real, they're not actually making anything like because the things that we're giving them is like old shit that was going to be decommissioned anyway. Like they're not like they're getting stuff that was outdated thirty years ago, and Russia can barely hang on against that. So it's like it's a testament. Like it like it's that was enough to sort of like refactor everything we thought about Russia. But if there's one thing Russia is good at, it's information campaigns. Like the Wagner Group, like the Internet Research Agency through the Rat Wagner Group is insane. It like the details in that and like the amount of like it, misinformation they were peddling all over the world in multiple countries everywhere is genuinely crazy i'm not sure if you heard but just recently it came out that all these conservatives were following russian talking points yeah uh, yeah they, they were they were paid uh, they were paid they were like a tenant media it was uh tim pool um yeah, tim, pool. T tim pool was the big one tim pool, and that was very funny and so you know and tim I, Dillon was like in the most recent tim Dillon episode talking about that he was like they wouldn't give me money because I'm saying too much shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but here's man, it, it's crazy. but th here's the thing. Tim Dillon is like the modern, in my mind, is more like the modern George Carlin. Like, like ostensibly, yeah, like that. ostensibly, his positions are like the left of center, left wing ones. But he's very much kind of like the jaded, like I've given up giving a fuck, like. Let's just let's just like make fun of everybody, make as many people mad as I can. And the funny thing, and the reason I, and, and, and like he's one of those people where it's like, it's like it's it's like uh, the Colbert Report. Like cons liberals and leftists loved it because it was a biting criticism of right wing ideology and talking points, and conservatives loved it because they're bad at media literacy. It's why they also love fucking the boys. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, like, yeah, like, I just, I, I, like, can, can media literacy be dead if it was never there in the first place? I guess, but, uh, other thought that I had just to finish this up, uh, Batman is getting a, uh, Hollywood, uh, Walk of Fame star, the character itself, not any uh, actor 
I not unheard of. Like, it's not it's not unheard of start, for characters to get no, no, no. things. First comic book though. First comic book character to ever get one. So that's cool. Uh the reason I bring that up is because I personally do you know who David Fincher is? No. Who is David Fincher? He's a director. He made seven Zodiac uh made quite a few different movies, but those are Gone Girl. I want him to direct a Batman detective movie. Because if he directed it, oh my fucking god. Isn't and there I, a new I, Harley I, Quinn movie? A Harley Quinn and Joker movie coming out? And let me talk about that, because that's one of my biggest pet peeves here. The fact that that Joker doesn't lead into Matt Reeves' fucking Batman has me so angry. You have no idea. <laughs> Matt Reeves. Uh, that's the Batman that just recently came out that's like, something in the way you move. I, it, I Batman thought... with the black woman, that one right there. Oh, okay. The first movie under under his thing. Did you not hear about that? Where Robin Pattinson plays Batman? Oh, it's Robert Pattinson's Batman. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that, why wouldn't they do that? Like, that sounds like a match made in heaven. I don't know, Evan. I don't know. Because you want to know who, who fucking Robert Pattinson looks like from the fucking Joker movie? Oh, I don't know. How about the little boy that played fucking Bruce Wayne? How about that? How about that? It, and just listen to my theory. For people who are like, Brian, he's 50, 60 years old playing Joker, and Robert Pattinson is like 20, 30s in that movie. Okay, why don't we introduce the fucking plot point of Joker being this almighty evil being cosmic force that is always just there, being evil, as it fucking should be! <laughs> I mean, Joker is supposed to be like a force of nature. That's what I'm saying. So what the fuck does it matter if he's that old? Keep him that age. That's a 40, 50 year old Joker versus a 30 year old Batman. That's a perfect setup. Uh, so if you're talking Batman, I'd like to talk also to you about very good. The, the Cape Crusader. Great fucking show. Batman Great the Cape show. Crusader. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I heard lots of good things. I heard like the only questionable thing I heard was like them uh, gender bending. Um, the penguin but from what i saw like in terms of like the performance it was it great it i worked. also Who i'm also in love with how they did harley here like i love how they just how completely she actually looks like like she, a jester. she actually looks like a jester and com like they desexualized her and completely removed joker from it well, I will say, you gotta remember, the original Batman animated series is where Harley Quinn was introduced. Yeah, I remember. She she was not even a comic, she's not a comic book, she was an um, animated series original character, and they front-loaded her into the comics and made her a bigger because she was so popular. But yeah, she she looks great. Plus, the way that they do Bruce Wayne in this, him actually being a charming motherfucker, not some isolated, damaged, mentally disturbed bitch, great. That's how he's supposed to be. He, yeah, he's supposed to have that facade. Like, he, in his mind, is Batman. Bruce Wayne is the facade. Mm. Like, he is, you know, he's fucking damn it. Now, granted... Like, the last 20 years has been a deconstruction of this character and how he's really just a mentally mentally ill, you know, Nepo baby, you know, dealing with his trauma in the in the in probably the most unhealthy way possible. But that's, that's just what me. I never understood about... That's what I never understood about the uh, cinematic uh, versions of Batman. I think except for Michael Keaton, which is so fucking weird to say. But mm -hmm. in terms of Bruce Wayne, like... He's been the only one who's done a good Bruce Wayne. Even Christopher Nolan, uh, Christian Bale's fucking Bruce Wayne was always, like, weird as fuck. <laughs> well, he, like, when he put on the facade and went out as Bruce Wayne, he was, you know, good. Like, like he did the, like, philanthropy bullshit, dude. Yeah, but. I just, trust me, man. If I could be the Kevin Feige of the DC Universe, ooh, bitch. Ooh, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Uh, I don't know. Oh, shit! Top Gear's done. Jeremy May explains why TV partnership with Clarkson and Richard Hammond has ended. 
Uh, according to okay. May, the part of the uh, they ended the partnership with the two. May said he believes the trio have largely exhausted our take on the subject, not the subject itself. There's space, I think, for a new approach to it, but it can't come from us. We've been too stuck in our way of doing it. We're getting we're getting on a bit, and everything does have to end. To be honest, we wanted to end it on our own terms, as we always used to say. We want to land it safely, not fly it into a cliff. When asked if the subject cars was the friend was, was uh, uh the subject was cars of the friendship between three men, May said, "I sometimes wonder if it's the friendship we wind up." We wind each other up so badly, it definitely started out as cars and our enthusiasm for them, and even, dare I say, our knowledge of them. But it's also about human relationships, without wishing to sound pretentious, also the human condition. A view of what life means from the perspective of people who are a bit overly obsessed about cars, and of course also turned it into a trial show, a pantomime, a circus, all of these other things as well. Uh, Clarkson, who's currently enjoying the biggest success of his career with Clarkson Farm, Billy said the trivial had thought long and hard about how we should end our 22-year partnership, but in the end, we just went to the end of the alphabet and selected Zimbabwe as a place to set the special. There's another reason why we chose Zimbabwe, though. We want would drive across it from east to west, as usual, but then we could cross the border and finish up where we began all those years ago, the uh, uh, Magdagidagida salt pans of Botswana. Clarkson said, it makes the three of us happy that their working relationship did not disintegrate in a blizzard of outrage and tabloid headlines, but it was it landed safely in Jen. Oh, you and me are such fucking uncultured swine. You know what was this week? What? The Emmys. <laughs> I did see that! Chapel Road was, was amazing. I loved her performance. I didn't watch it. I think I was working that day. I but saw you know clips. what won a fuck ton of shit? What? Shogun. Really? Isn't that on Netflix? Uh, it's on Hulu because it's made by FX, but it is supposedly good as fuck. Uh, first time a... What's his name? First time a... Second time an Asian actor has ever won for uh, Best Actor with an Emmy. First person first asian woman to ever win best actress in a tv show for both for shogun i would have thought the actress leading everything everywhere all at once would have won one that's oscars emmy is tv oh i don't know if you've heard about this story so this is uh this was back in 2014 um this is about uh uh i think it, this is about michael steen and he was a person who played who died of a degenerative muscle disorder in 2014. But his parent is if there's a documentary coming out about how uh, his parents discovered he had an entire other life in World of Warcraft. He spent uh, like good uh, or bad. Like 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 good. It takes us through it, this, this quote. The film takes us on a journey through the breath of Matt Steen's adventurous online life, introducing us to Iblin, his charismatic World of Warcraft persona and underscores how community and soulful relationships can transcend boundaries of the physical world. This, I've heard this story. It's like, it's like wholesome. It gives like his parents like a better understanding of their son. And, you know, it's, 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 it's bittersweet, but it's, it's nice. Definitely something I might end up watching. When does it, when does it come out? Uh, uh play the trailer and just skip to the end. Okay. Because it probably does it. Just because we don't want to get copyright stroke. October twenty fifth. Fun. F That's Maddie's birthday. I for almost forgot. No wait. When was Maddie? Born? Oh, the fourth. That was it. Anywho. But yeah. Uh, we are an hour in. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about that like that grants importance before we hop off here and fuck about for a little bit in in personal calls? Uh. uh -huh. Unless you want to talk more about the, uh, I was going to say the Grammys, uh, the Emmys. Nah, I'm good. I, I mean, uh, have you watched a lot of the TV shows this year? Or the most, year? the most artistically poignant thing I've watched this year was the third season of The oh, Bear. Oh, 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 I was going to say, you know, you, you don't watch Dexter, so it doesn't matter to you. But, uh, she won, uh, Tina from The Bear, she won. And um, her her husband is her actual husband in the show. Tina, Tina, Tina. 
Tina the bear. Oh, oh shit! Bear. That's so cute! I like that. Yeah. And her husband plays a detective from Dexter. That's why I said he's from Dexter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it feels like there's a. It feels like there's like a new show called Fargo coming out like every four years, and I don't know which one. No, no, like... no, no, no. Fargo has been out. It's a great show. It's a uh, what's it called? Uh, anthology series. Every single season is a different like period of time, but it's fuck. It's good. The fourth season really does some bullshit, like, story-wise. I would stay away from that one. But the fifth one has the guy from New Girl in it, Winston. Nice. Uh, last Week Tonight won Scripted Variety Series. That makes sense. Uh, the Daily yeah, Show... Yeah, tried talking about his... Real quick with John Oliver. You tried talking about his dead dog on stage to thank him for the uh, award, and they played him off. <laughs> he's probably he like, pro fuck off <laughs> <laughs> that's funny it's that total John Oliver thing to do also uh, uh, John Stewart saving single handedly saving the Daily Show I mean the only reason <laughs> listen no listen me. listen no hate to Trevor Noah I like his stand up like for what it was but he was funnier before he got on the Daily Show, and like now he's just like doing podcasts and shit. Which I'm like, good for him. Make your money, honey. Like, do you do you? Like, you were making a couple, oh, a few million. Uh, uh, just for us, hacks, little horses, baby. Right oh yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, you want to know the craziest fucking thing? You want to know the craziest thing about the Emmys? The What's Bear up? is considered a comedy series. That's what the fuck I said. I mean, That's I can. What the fuck I said. I mean, it strikes me as like a black comedy, but like a really black comedy. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know how they get comedy from that. I don't fucking know, man. It's like, like it just makes me kind of fucking sad. like, like there are moments that are funny, like whenever fa like back is on screen. And Uncle wrong. Jimmy. There's comedic times, but, but I, don't I wouldn't describe it as a comedy. comedy. It's like, exactly. you know, I don't know. That's fucking weird. But you know, you know what they uh, yeah. yeah, whatever. But yeah, that's I get that. Jamie Lee Curtis didn't win for the boy, uh, the bear. I she don't get me wrong. Her acting was great, but like a she was barely on it. For what it was, for what it's worth, and I don't even think her performances that's her performance necessarily eclipses other people's. At least in that dinner scene. Oh, she oh she killed it in the dinner scene, but like she also like wasn't the only. I know that wasn't stellar. this season. I know that yeah, wasn't no, this season. Yeah, it wasn't this season. But even if it was, like that wasn't the only stellar performance in that scene. The fact that Bob Odenkirk didn't get fucking nominated, at least, for either that or Better Call Saul is criminal. Yeah. I like Odenkirk. Have you ever watched Mr. Show? Mr. What? Mr. Show. I think that's the thing that he did. No, I haven't. Uh, it's an original sketch comedy in the, like, 95 on HBO. It was him and David Cross. I really liked Bob Odenkirk in Nobody. I didn't see Nobody. Nobody. Know. It is one of my. It is, I think, my favorite. That one's movie. coming out. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna. I'm, told, I'm. I'm gonna fucking watch it. In fact, I would I love. Was he in The Incredibles too? Uh, who was he in The Incredibles too? Bob Odenkirk was Winston uh, Devore. Who's Winston DeVore? But, I don't know. Whatever. My thing is, is that um, I would love to watch Nobody With You. We're going to find out if I'm going to be in fucking L.A. or not. Um, If I am, I we'll, we'll, we'll watch it together. If I'm not, we're going to hop on here and we're going to watch it together. That Make good. a movie night of it. But, um... On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to uh, 
the the uh the episode twenty five of the rundown. If you want to follow Brian, you can find his link down in the description at on Instagram at no dot two underscore Brian. And uh, all my shit's gonna come in the post scroll with pre recorded Evan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching the rundown. Bri uh, me and Brian, thank you. We'll see you guys uh next Monday uh the thirtieth. Have a good one. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg/10. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.